Okay class, so the reason we've been learning about radians and the reason we're learning about position around a circle is of course to apply that to real life situations. So the circle can be considered a useful thing uh, for anything that has a circular motion, something that's turning in a circle. Uh, for instance, it could be a Ferris wheel. We could be talking about a record player, a tire on a car, a tire on your bicycle. Uh, a pendulum even has a portion of a circle that it, it maps out when it's going like this. Uh, all of those involve a circle. And what we're going to focus on right now is an example that uses the Ferris wheel in terms of its position and some various things uh, as it maps out a sine curve and a cosine curve. Uh, so what we're going to do is I'm going to imagine that you're boarding on a Ferris wheel. And this, for, this Ferris wheel currently is a little bizarre. It's centered at 0, 0 on the xy coordinate grid. And uh, let's rate its radius. I'm not sure what the radius is, but let's call it something like 15 meters. So this is a 15 meter long radius that goes from the center out to our starting position. Uh, if I was interested then in how high I was going above the midline, I could then calculate that using something for y. y is equivalent to 15 cosine of theta. Uh, but in addition, I could also, maybe I want to know how far out I am from the center of the Ferris wheel. If I want to know that, that's a horizontal component or your x component, and that would read that x is equal to 15, um, whoops, I put down here sine, the vertical part is, is sine, by the way, not cosine, but the x coordinate is cosine, the horizontal. So I can know where I am on this Ferris wheel simply by uh, taking 15 cosine of the angle I've traveled and 15 sine of the angle I've traveled, uh, where the angle is measured in this direction. Okay, so if this were truly a Ferris wheel, uh, this Ferris wheel right here actually is centered at the ground level, which is a little bizarre because that would mean that you have to go below ground. Uh, well, one way to think about getting on the Ferris wheel here is to say that you start recording um, when the last person gets on the Ferris wheel right here, you start recording here. Uh, so that way you can st stick with the consistency of using cosine theta and sine theta with a given radius. Um, we can do that. So what we'll do is, is focus on this as our position away from the vertical and this as our position above the ground. What I want to think about before I get into the whole Ferris wheel connection is how does that look then if I wanted to graph, for instance, the position above the ground for a given angle? Well, instead of being an xy coordinate grid, I'm talking about graphing something that looks like this, where this is my angle on this axis, the horizontal axis, and this is my y component on the, well, the y axis. It's our height, right? It's the height above the midline, the height above the horizontal. If I were to start graphing that, if I started here, where I normally start uh, at zero degrees or zero radians, that would be a position here, uh, not nowhere above the ground. But as I continue to go up, if I go 90 degrees or pi over two radians, uh, that may put me in position at a maximum distance away from the center, a maximum distance away from the horizontal of a total radius of whatever our Ferris wheel is using. So if this is using 15, we would reach a, max, a maximum height of 15 at a position that is 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians in. So I'd have a, a point there to map. If I kept going another 90 degrees, so I'd travel 180 degrees or pi radians, then I'd be back at my uh, position of zero height, zero vertical height above the horizontal. So pi radians would put us here back at the horizontal. If I travel now this way to a full 270 degrees or three pi over two, remembering that this quadrant is pi over two, this would be two pi over two, this is three pi over two, um, that gives us this coordinate at three pi over two, then this value at three pi over two puts us at the most negative we can get, the lowest point on this Ferris wheel, which would be a negative 15. So that's this value down here. And then lastly, if I travel the full 360 degrees back to pi, I'm back in my original starting position, it puts me here, uh, this is at 2 pi. Um, and if I added a few more coordinates, what happens at 45, and then the next to the 135 mark, and so on, if I add those in, uh, I would have a very nice smooth curve that takes on this wave. Okay, and this wave right here is referred to as the sine curve. Okay, and this particular sine curve has a height of 15, uh, and it goes down to negative 15. This length right here is determined as the radius of your circle, but in science, in, in waves, we call that the amplitude. 
So the amplitude of this curve is given to us by the radius. This is an equation that would look something like y equals 15 sine of theta. Now that would be referencing our vertical component, our height, anywhere around the Ferris wheel for different angle measures. If I wanted to know where it was after a 135 degree turn or this value over here, I could calculate just the y component, or I could look at its equivalent sine curve and know where I am, somewhere in this range. Okay? But we also are sometimes interested in the horizontal component, right? And the horizontal component goes with x, and so the horizontal component would be dealing with starting off here at its maximum radius. So a curve like this would have theta on this axis, and for zero degrees, we'd be at a height of a full radius away. Okay, and then as we rotate up to pi over two, I'm now no distance away from the horizontal. Remember the x is the horizontal component, and so if I come rotating up this way, I'm now on the vertical, I'm at zero distance away from the vertical horizontally. So at pi over two, I would be located at zero horizontal distance. And then if I come down here to 180 degrees or pi radians, I'd be at a full negative horizontal distance away. That'd be at a full negative 15. And so at pi, I would have a negative 15. And if I kept going to 270 degrees or three pi over two, I'm now again, zero horizontal distance away from that vertical. So this puts me back at zero. And then lastly, if I go the full 360 or two pi, I'm again at the maximum distance I can get horizontally from the vertical, putting me at a height of 15. This curve could also be smoothed out if I connected the horizontal pieces as we go. So be a curve that looks something like this. Okay. And this curve is referenced as the cosine curve. And that's cosine of theta, 15 cosine of theta given the radius of 15. This is actually referencing your x values for any position around a circle. Note that these curves are not that different. In fact, they're the exact same curve in terms of the max and minimums. The thing that differs is where they begin. This is beginning off zero degrees at a maximum point. This is at zero degrees at the midline. Um, we could shift this graph onto the cosine graph, the cosine graph onto the sine graph, simply by moving 90 degrees or pi over two. But we're going to start getting into how the circle and these sine waves are connected using something called the sinusoid in the next lesson.